Conversations. So um, there's a conference call I believe set up with the in the next two weeks or so. Um, one of the challenges is 2020. I think would be very uh, tight to plan because it is quite a large event. Um, so perhaps we could look at when we bring the report back 2020 or 2021, which which is it, whichever is more. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a question on the CAO. You had a conference call. Is that kind of an internal staff? Is that yeah, I reached out because uh, I know there's been some um, desire to host this, to host the ASB uh, tour here in Lethbridge County, and I think it would be an excellent opportunity for us to showcase the county. So um, after the one we went to in Strathcona, um, I did have an initial conversation, and then there was one scheduled about a month ago that got cancelled, so I have uh, one scheduled in I think two or three weeks. Thanks, sorry, yes, yes. Any other discussion? Morris? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, you think that is uh, to end is the best way to go about it for 21 instead of 20? I just think it's a bit tight, and we've also had some conversations with the MD of Tabor too, and they would be interested in hosting, uh, like co-hosting with us, and that might be more beneficial. But if we do do that, it's too soon to plan it all for 2021. There's funding out there available for to hire project managers. Um, we did a similar event like that, a housing summit, and they could come in and take it. But I know 2020 is pretty tight. Yeah. Any other comments or discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the question. Those in favor? Those opposed? Okay. Let's move down to the G1 54CQ. Bylaw 19-019 to print the city of
signed by the the two parties that allow for that bylaw to be uh, to apply in a neighboring municipality. So we have put together bylaw 19-019, and we're recommending today that the uh, uh, county council passes first. Second and third reading the bylaw 19-019 to permit the City of Lethbridge bylaw 6146 waste and recycling to be applied within Lethbridge County borders. And the agreement states that it's specifically at the landfill, uh, the city landfill site. Any questions or discussions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is this bylaw more of an update of previous bylaws or is it more because of their recycling facility is coming online? It's a little bit of both. Um, there's a fee and schedule that, uh, that they want to charge at the landfill for tipping fees and for uh, uh, domestic drop off and all that kind of stuff. There's also enforcement of things like untarped loads, uh, uh, overweight stuff different things that they want to be able to enforce as part of their bylaw uh, that would if somebody pulls in with a load that's a mixed load and they have to reject them all those kind of things are in there um, so it is an update but it also does have something some parts to do with recycling and, and sorting of loads and stuff like that. Okay. So, uh, Frank, just a question you mentioned about charging for tipping fees so what are the county residents who have the cards so they can go directly to the landfill so they're going to call the LZ or something. Yeah. How does that apply to them? It doesn't. It doesn't. No, it's the neighbor's card. Well, things like uh, for tarping their loads, things that have always existed are still part of that. They're still stated in that bylaw for enforcement. So uh, as far as the neighbor's card that they have and they have, they can go there and flash their card and say they're a county resident, that doesn't change. <clears throat> And we did have the city do a review of our transfer sites and ensure that we are not going to be not in compliance with their bylaw when we bring our loads from the transfer sites because of the nature of our garbage that's going there. So we did that review as well. Any other questions?
So there is the uh, Edgemore, uh, sorry, Edgewood Stables subdivision, which is right here, just north of the city, and then this area will encompass the area in between uh, Edgewood Stables and Deer, what we call the Deer View, which is going down to the Little Farge Road uh, gravel pit. So it's kind of this larger area here. So they have submitted this plan to um, pretty much just to find further in what we would consider infill country residential development. There's a number of large parcels in this area that would be suitable for subdivision. And as part of the intermunicipal development plan that we have with the city, it was um, in that plan it was included that further subdivision could occur as long as the applicants or the area owners would create what we the area structure plan to show how the lots could be further subdivided um, and so that's what they have done and so they've shown there's not um, an opportunity for too many subdivisions left in this area but Mr. Aylman um, specifically who um, owns this parcel here uh, have wanted the opportunity to be able to subdivide in the future so if this application is successful um, then he would be able to come back to council for further subdivision. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So, so are those houses together? I guess that's more. Verse 29. Yes, up here. No, you no, know, below between where you said he lived. But it goes under the specific picture there. Oh, there's no so going right in that area right this there. This here? Yeah. Yep, those are all parcels and they all have houses. Okay, so they're just going to be subdivided. They already, so a lot of these parcels are already at, they can't be further subdivided. It's the ones that are over four acres in size that would be eligible for subdivision in the future. So some of these lots are, you know, they're at capacity because they don't have anywhere else to subdivide. They have the coolies that would um, be a constraint to subdivision, uh, or they're already at the two acre capacity. So then is he kind of as their agent to do a subdivision? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's, um, how it works with what we prefer to do with area structure plans is instead of just doing one title, we want them to look at a broader area so that not every single person is having to come back and either amend a plan or be included in a plan. So this way, um, Mr. Aylman is acting for a number of landowners. Um, and so in the future, if they do wish to subdivide, they would, um, he would be compensated for doing the plan. Um, it's an endeavor to assist that would apply. So, but yes, essentially he's somewhat representing the landowners in this area. And they don't have to subdivide if they don't wish to in the future. It's just that now they would have that opportunity going forward. So, does that clarify the, a bit better? Okay. Yes, thanks. Yeah. Um, so the parcels, for the most part, in this area are zoned for country residential. They are zoned country residential, but they are they don't have the plan to back the future subdivision. So this is the first step to move forward in that regard. Um, we have sent out a circulation to the other county departments, uh, external agencies, and the city of Lethbridge for review. We have received back a number of comments. There have been no concerns to date. And it is anticipated that we would have a public hearing for this particular bylaw on the second meeting in June, so June 20th. So with that, we would recommend, administration recommends first reading of this particular bylaw. Any questions, other questions of council? Chairman, I'll uh, move uh, first reading of bylaw 19 017. Any further questions? Discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the question. Those in favor? Those opposed? Carried. Chairman, good morning everyone.
brief summary of this report is that the University of Lethbridge has been exploring ways to expand its programs and offerings, make them more relevant and applicable to the needs of our southern Alberta economy. And they're looking at establishing a locally focused engineering program with kind of an agricultural concentration to it. And they're in the process of applying for provincial approval for such a program. And they're asking for a letter of support from county council. The recommendation is that council approve a letter of support under the Reeves signature for the University of Lethbridge's proposed Bachelor of Engineering program. So a little bit more background information there is historically council of course has been consistent in providing various letters of support for economic, economic development projects, grant applications and so on, especially when they align with the council's strategic pillars in our strategic plan for developing strong relationships in the region and supporting a vibrant economic environment. And the, for the last few years, the university has been researching and reviewing needs of Southern Alberta business to determine where gaps in skill sets may exist and looking at what education and training programs are available to meet those needs. And they have identified a distinct shortage in engineering skills among the local workforce, particularly, particularly in relation to the agricultural sector. They see the need for a Bachelor of Engineering program designed for local labor force and market needs in conjunction with its already existing cooperative program. This would provide real world experience to students and provide local businesses the opportunity to connect with future potential employees who will have received appropriate training to meet, again, those local distinct and unique labor market needs. Providing a letter of support and this program won't directly affect Lethbridge County's operations, but will, in the grand scheme of things, provide greater access to skilled labor. And that was one of the needs identified in the business retention and expansion survey that was conducted on behalf of Lethbridge County last year. So providing a letter of support has no you know, identifiable negative consequences for the county, and again, supports the strategic pillars identified in the strategic plan to help address the issue of skilled labor shortage for the region. There are no financial implications to the county for providing such a letter. And supporting the program application is a way of showing tangible, meaningful support to the University of Lethbridge and its application to the provincial government. And if the program and application is successful, county businesses in the grand scheme will have access to more locally trained, skilled labor. One can expect to be long-term benefits to the county's region, to the county, pardon me, and the region's economy, therefore by having a larger and more highly skilled and trained labor pool. And there is an attachment there from the university. Let me look on page 68 and 69. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, always amazed at how the college and university just kind of keep, keeps ahead of the curve of what the needs are the, of kind of Southern Alberta to bring in students from out to train them and a lot of those students end up staying here too after and working. And so I will move that we that county council approved a letter of support under the Reeves signature for the University of Lethbridge's proposed Bachelor of Engineering program. Any further discussion? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I was, pardon me, I was remiss in identifying that on the last page of that report, there's actually a draft letter. So we anticipated that council would uh, be in support of this and they drafted the letter there. Yeah, I noticed that. There's a lot of draft letter for your signature. Okay. We're ahead of the group, too. Apparently. <laughs> Seeing no more further discussion under call to question, those in favor? Those opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thank you.
Those opposed? Carried. Sorry, if you want to start out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so I'm pleased to present uh, for County Council's uh, consideration. The Lethbridge County and MD of Willow Creek Municipal Development Plan. Um, so this is the first of uh, four rural to rural IDPs that the county, county council will be seeing in the next coming months. Um, it went relatively smoothly in terms of its um, creation and the discussions with the MD have been very positive so far with regards to how this is going to be implemented in the future. The Municipal Government Act, as um, many of council is probably aware, requires that all um, municipalities and their adjoining neighbors have to create an intramissile development plan. And this includes obviously the rurals and rural to rural uh, municipalities. So Lethbridge County has, um, we have six urban to rural, ur like urban, so that we have to do intramissile development plans and uh, the five uh, rural to rural. So we've already done the one for the MD Tabor that was approved last year. Um, that one was completed by the Old Man River Regional Services Commission. <coughs> and the remaining four are being done in-house um, just to uh, create some efficiencies and some cost savings. The Lethbridge County MD of uh, Willow Creek Intermissile Development Plan um, is, is fairly similar to the one that we did with the MD of Tabor in that it's um, we wanted to keep it fairly simple um, some high level policies just so we're pretty much doing what we already do uh, or putting on paper what we actually already do so we already talked to them when we have developments within that one mile area of our municipal boundaries so anything that you know say a gravel pit or discretionary use um, any road um, issues that come up we have a conversation with our uh, rural neighbors about those and so we just put those types of policies into this plan um, just to kind of entrench those those ideas so that as you know there could be staff changes and council changes over time that this document will stand and that people will have something to refer to going into the future so the draft plan includes a framework for the refer for referrals um, as i just mentioned and also dispute resolution if there's something that uh, comes up and there's some disagreements on how to move forward on that. We have a, a process that we can uh, actually handle uh, any disputes that could arise. We talk about land use in this plan, so looking at resource extraction, agriculture, industry, energy development, country residential development at a very high level. It's not um, really specific, but it's looking at it very broadly just to say we're going to continue that conversation with each other. Transportation and road networks are obviously very important as roads run through municipalities. They don't just stop at the border. So um, if we're going to say be proposing a new haul route that might be going into the MD of Willow Creek, we'll make sure that we're having discussions with them to see if there's any impact of doing that on their infrastructure or their, um, their residents that live in that area. We did have an open house, um, which I do believe many of you were able to attend on March 25th of this last year at the Monarch Community Hall. It was um, fairly well attended by uh, both county residents and MD residents. There was one request from um, a resident in the MD of Willow Creek just asking that we um, improve the policies under the resource extraction just to have more consideration on the cumulative effects of, um, say, gravel operations in the River Valley. Uh, in discussions with the MD Willow Creek, they were um, open to that, so we did we did add a, an extra policy in there just so that that would be covered off. It's not something that we, it's something that we would already do under the county's land use bylaw, but once again, it's just putting in on paper what we would already do, and it gives people the comfort of knowing that, you know, we're, we have policies in place, and if something goes awry, they have something that they can refer back to. We sent out a draft of the IDP to external agencies for their review and comment. Um, we did receive comments from Alberta Transportation, ACO Pipelines, TransCanada Corporation, which is the major uh, pipeline corporation, and uh, no, other, no other comments were received. So out of probably the 25 or 30 notices I sent out, I got three. <laughs> but that's better than nothing. Alberta Transportation didn't have any concerns and they were pleased with the policies that we put in place with regards to any of the highways that transect that um, intermissible boundary. 
Trans Canada and Axel <coughs> Pipeline um, did request that an additional policy be included in the International Development Plan to address some land use planning and proximity to pipeline, major pipeline infrastructure. Um, in discussions with the ME and also internally, uh, it was determined that pipeline infrastructure is generally dealt with at a lower levels of planning, so at your uh, area structure plan, subdivision development phasing, not generally at a high level um, policy level as the International Development Plan. So uh, we concluded that we would not change any of the policies in this plan to address their specific concerns. Um, they were very, they wanted very specific policies put in that we just felt were too specific for a rural to rural um, IEP that, that's generally meant to be more high level and, and once again trying to keep it more simple and, and based off of what our practices already are. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and the ME was um, concurred with that particular viewpoint and, and didn't recommend any changes. We did put a notice of this public hearing in the April 23rd and 30th editions of the Sunny South News and the ME also had uh, notices put into their local newspaper and on their website. We did not receive any comments with regards to the proposed plan. Uh, so with that, um, we would recommend that County Council approve second and third reading after closing the public hearing of this particular bylaw as drafted. Um, I will note that the MG of Tabor, or I'm sorry, the MG of Willow Creek did approve um, their bylaw on May 8th. Um, there was no changes that they proposed at their public hearing, so um, they, I think with regards to how this process has gone, it's gone very smoothly. We've had very good conversations with not only um, this municipality or the MDA of Willow Creek, but our other um, rural neighbors in terms of moving these projects forward um, in a timely and efficient manner. Um, with that, are there any questions of council on the actual draft or of the discussion I just had? into um, those more specific land use issues and so that's where we felt it was best to cover off any um, so aqua pipelines or utility corridors that's in our municipal development plan where we look more uh, kind of drill down into the planning areas and look at more specific areas um, the IDP area the, the, the area where Trans Canada transects into and I do believe it is in your agenda package they show where their um, area is it's right along Highway 3 and along the very south, um, southern boundary of our municipal development plan. Um, we just don't feel that there's a lot of merit in including it at the, this high level of document because we will address it and we do address it at other stages of development. That is, that is more relevant to this would just be kind of adding some policies that um, in, in my opinion and um, in the Andy Willow Creek's opinion it's not the right fit. So where our municipal development plan, we say, you know, we have to consider the location of major pipelines, and then we, if there was an area structure plan in an area where there was a major pipeline, then we would have even more consultation with them in terms of making sure that we can meet any required <coughs> setbacks or referral areas with them. So has, does that answer your question? Uh, yes, it did, thanks. I just wanted to say thank you because a lot of the other uh, counties and MDs are hiring people outside, but we are fortunate enough and Hillary, we appreciate that you're doing all this work internally. So thank you very much. My pleasure. Larry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When this bylaw was presented to council for first reading on April 18th, I presented it myself because our senior planner was away at that time. And there was one question that was asked by council that was in the report that accompanied that bylaw, and it had to do with resolving an encroachment issue. And at the time, I didn't have the answer, but I gave my word that I would follow up with it. So I'd just like to do that quickly and follow up and say that simply, unfortunately, that statement that was in there, that report on April 18th, was a carryover from a previous report and should not have been there. In, in effect, it was a typographic error. So just kind of closing the loop on that. Thank you. Any other questions from council? And I would then ask the 
public to, if there is any comments, to please address their comments towards council and uh, please stick to the topic and you have about five minutes to talk to each. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the bylaw? Yeah, exactly. Is there one, anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the bylaw? And last call, or is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the bylaw? Seeing none, does anyone wish to speak in favor of the bylaw? Does anyone wish to speak in favor of the bylaw? And last call, does anyone wish to speak in favor of the bylaw? Seeing none, does council have any last questions? Administration, do you have any questions? I would ask them for a motion to close the public hearing. So. <clears throat> All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Having heard that now, we can move on to second reading if you so choose. I'll move second. Any discussion? Seeing none, call a question. Those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Third reading? Tori? Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor, those opposed, carry. Thank you, Hillary. Thanks. Thank you. Trustees of the Blood Tribe, Kainawa uh, Specific Claims Trust Number One and Two, and through 1432126 Alberta Limited. Uh, from this point on, uh, in the conversation, we can uh, consider uh, them as the Blood Tribe or the trustees, either one. Uh, instead of saying that the whole name uh, over and over, they're requesting support for their project by, by way of a memorandum of understanding to be signed by the town of Lethbridge or by the county, Lethbridge County, City of Lethbridge, Town of Coldale, and the trustees. The MOU is specific to the services of water and wastewater being provided to the specified parcel of land west of Highway 3 near Coldhurst. So it's up in this area. Um, and then there's some other parcels of land that they're going to service in future phases, but uh, um, they're all. Anyway, it's all, it's all land that they have uh, applied to, to get reserve status on. Um, the, the history on that is that in 2009, uh, this numbered company on behalf of the trustees, uh, uh, south of Highway 509 near Kip as a result of two land claims, Acres 1 and Acres 2, uh, that provided compensation for the Blood Tribe's loss to the eastmost portion of the Blood Reserve occupied at the time by Fort Rupa and was surrendered by da to David Akers by the federal government in 1889 without the consent of the Blood Tribe. Processes are underway to incorporate these purchased lands into the reserve and to acquire subsurface rates from the province of Alberta. They did a feasibility study conducted by WSP Engineering and uh, 
the, the development of a master plan. Uh, the concept includes a hotel, a conference center, equestrian center, RV camping area, and not included in the first phase is a 25 lot residential subdivision um, in that area as well, or I guess a reserve housing subdivision uh, along the highway. The servicing study ident identified the regional servicing as preferred option for providing water and sewer services to the site. So they're looking to tie into our water line that uh, uh, services the, uh, the Hamlet of Monarch and the uh, North Co-op services in that area. So they would be beyond the connection to Colders on that regional line. Um, and then their wastewater services would have to go through our right of way through AT's right of way into the town of Colders and for them to handle the flows and send it through their system that they already have in the region of the city. They're looking at approximately 1,500 cubic meters, well it's not in here, uh, of water and wastewater. Uh, that must be a monthly flow. I'd have to check on the flow. If you're interested in the flow, I'll check on that. But, uh, anyway, so the idea is that we had suggested they would get a letter of understanding saying they would support the project. It wasn't uh, um, the group that came and presented to us earlier this week had suggested that an MOU was their preferred method. Uh, the original MOU, we weren't really happy with the way it was worded. We changed it on our end. We vetted it through our solicitor and they made a bunch of changes to it something that we're happier with that has an out clause that, that is not uh, as binding as some of the other clauses that were in the original MOU. Uh, it has a one year termination date. If they don't do anything, then we're not bound to uh, anything in that document. So today we're here to ask for uh, council approval to have that MOU signed with uh, the trustees of the Blood Tribe uh, the town of Cold Purse, the city of Lethbridge, and Lethbridge County. So, Rick, just a question. You said the amount of water they would need, is, will that be some, uh, sufficient from the units they've already bought? No, or not even close. So how do, how do you... They, they're saying they have license they can transfer from other areas. So they must have water rights coming out of the river that is from the reserve already or they're intending on purchasing new license. So what we're dealing with is strictly capacity only. We're having nothing to do with their license. So do they still need the units that they have from us? The ones that the co-op sold them? Yes. That is uh, up in the air and there's a, it's a discussion that's uh, kind of gone around full circle and we've asked the uh, <coughs> The North Co-op actually made direct contact with the City of Lethbridge about the agreement that Lethbridge has with the county and we asked them not to do that, that whatever comes out of that is not, uh, the City of Lethbridge has asked that they have one specific uh, water user there and not necessarily be going through the Co-op. They want to go with the county directly to the Blood Drive, they don't want the Co-op in the middle there, so that would be that's the case that those licenses have to be sold back to the North Co-op or they, they may be able to keep them for some other purpose but I don't think the city will be keen on that. Uh, but I would be kind of speaking on their behalf as kind of a back and forth that's been going on. But I think I got most of that. Well, <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Sorry. Thank you Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, I guess just a procedural question. Um, I think in previous discussions, um, it, and as it says in the report here, processes are underway to incorporate these purchase lands. And um, as the CAO has pointed out, that can be a, a long and onerous process to get that completed. Is administration aware? Like, is the are they able to uh, move forward and uh, continue down this path without that? process being finalized where the, the land is actually transferred or is, do we have a timeline I guess would be my question. They they were throwing numbers around uh, like a full build up within five years and they said it's, it's been a 
10 year process till now since they made their original, uh, filed the paperwork to have that transferred to revert to reserve status. So you can see the 2009 date in the report. And they said that their indication is that it's coming to an end in the next few weeks or months. And that they're expecting to have that status then so that they can proceed with detailed design. Um, and secure the rest of the federal funding that they assume is in the queue specifically for this project. Um, that they want an MOU and a letter of understanding with our uh, A letter of support is not quite sufficient enough for their purposes. Um, and just to add to that, I spoke directly to the funders because I wanted to see what they specifically needed from the county. Was it a letter of support? Was it an MOU? So the funding is partway down the process. Um, with regards to the land, um, they did indicate, as Rick has said, that it, it is imminent, but I've been through this process before and I, I don't think it's as imminent as they suspect. So that's why the MOU gives us the opportunity to support the project, but also to have an applause for the project. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That MOU, is that, did I hear that right? It's only good for one year at a time? There, there's a, yeah, there's an out clause that gives us, uh, if, if we're not comfortable after that first year that we're, uh, that we can pull our support at that point. Any other questions? See? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, the county will have more than enough capacity off that line to service a so, hotel and casino and everything. There, there's there's enough capacity at the city connection at Colhurst. So there's enough for Colhurst and Colhurst growth. There's enough for our capacity that's in that line today and future growth for Monarch and those type of, uh, in that area. We put in the MOU specifically that they're not permitted to calculate existing volumes that we have in store in place right now in their needs when they calculate what the required upgrade is. So if we have excess capacity, they can't say uh, our capacity that we have in excess plus what they need determines the size of the line. It's what their needs are and their growth potential is on top of whatever our existing capacity is. So they can't go and say, we're gonna put in, if the calculations say, without the county's capacity, we're gonna put in an eight inch line, where the calculations, if you subtract our existing capacity, requires a 10 inch line, then they would have to put in the bigger line. That's the way we've worded the MOU that the design has to incorporate. And the same thing for, for Colters going to the city because this is going to really tax their capacity of, of that wastewater going to the city. And they may not have, they, they don't want to use up all their future growth room because they're adding this one customer. That, so they would ultimately be responsible for those upgrades as well. Um, and that's how we've worded the MOU so that we don't get stuck doing, losing our capacity or having to pay for upgrades in the future. There's a four inch line there now, which is ample enough for our needs, but uh, part of the issues we're going through, and there isn't detailed design yet, is what size of line can they twin it? Can they do some other uh, pipe bursting is what I would suggest, but that's my opinion. Maybe they'll find a different route so they don't have to go in ATs right away. Um, but it's all questions that we have which is why we wanted the MOU so, so uh, vague that there's no, not a whole lot of detail in it. Any other questions? Thanks, Rick. Um, no other questions? Can you use the phone for me? Yeah. If you're comfortable doing so.
move that the county council approve the signing of the memorandum of understanding between the trustees of the blood tribe Kiowas specific claims trust number one and two by and through 1432 Alberta Limited and the city of Lethbridge, Lethbridge County on the border for water and wastewater services. Being that, I'm going to call the question. Those in favor? Those opposed? Thank you, Chair. Just a matter of sure we can take my. that fit everybody uh, was interesting because uh, mine I could get my arm down the one sleeve and I couldn't find it on the back side over here. <laughs> I don't know who they were, what thought they were giving me, but anyway. And on the 29th, we went to the planning conference to meet others. Okay, uh, April 3rd, I have a city general meeting and that's where they were wondering about the building and stuff. And, uh, back at all yet we got it back okay yeah okay and then county uh, meetings on the uh, uh, fourth and then uh, um, just, oh we went to the tribute on the what for the fundraiser and then I went to the 20th year too and uh, ASB on Thursday uh, to uh, Ralph and Brianne's uh, uh, university. Uh, yeah, he was here. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, the RFK on uh, Sedimo Two Wing on the 13th. Uh, Station on the 16th, audit on the 17th, council on the 18th, and, um, emergency service services on the 25th, and, uh, and then red gear planning. library meeting that was the they were able to secure some funding um, through the provincial government uh, to do a bunch of uh, upgrades and renovations so that was the, uh, the first meeting held in the newly upgraded Chinook Arch building uh, did a really good job uh, I believe the grand opening is coming up at the end of the month there is new building. Uh, the same building still on the, the north side um, just a, a modernized uh, April 18th, the County Council meeting, and on the 25th, uh, update on emergency services meeting. My April started with the third uh, uh, exhibition park board meeting, the fourth at a council meeting, uh, April 11th, uh, agriculture service board, and the 12th <coughs> had an exhibition park committee meeting, and 16th uh, had the research station tour, Leopard Research Station tour, which was really great. Uh, 18th council meeting and the 25th update on emergency services. Okay, April 1st, 4th, uh, county council meeting. Okay. April 
Texas Highway Tree Trimming Association meeting, the 10th the Golden Chamber of Commerce meeting, last round of the 11th, Agriculture Service Board meeting, 16th the Lesbian Research Station Tour, 18th Council meeting, 25th update on the Bridges Service meeting, and the 29th to the 1st of Black Rock. April the 4th council meeting and I also got to mention maybe uh, from now on we should put that on there too uh, I also represent the uh, Pitchview Chamber of Commerce I never put in for it and that's maybe why my name is not down there but I do represent the county at that chamber meeting I was also a member of the board before our council <coughs> April the 11th Agriculture Service Board meeting April the 16th, let's put the t-shirts station to it. And oh man, that was a good tour. A lot of things going on down there. And in the summer, I believe, they employ about 500 people. Or kids, 500. 500, yeah. But if the things they do down there, you know, well, the majority of people don't realize it. Matter of fact, we don't even realize it, I guess, but it's, it's quite something. And on April the 17th, audit committee meeting. And I'll tell you, it's a good thing that I know a lot of things about auditing because uh, I picked quite a few things on, on there and I absolutely couldn't find nothing wrong. <laughs> and then 18th, council meeting again. And April the 25th update on emergency services. <coughs> And that was actually a good meeting too. April the 29th to May the 1st, uh, there was a planning conference in Radium. It was, I thought it was one of the better ones. That's my report. Thank you. So I guess we need a motion to accept those reports. Thank you. Well, thank you. All in favor? Chair, as described, this application in front of you is a, it's a land swap and reconfiguration between two adjacent um, parcels um, located in the section 26, just uh, east of the city here. Um, the, it's a, an adjustment in order to make one of the yards um, a, a little bit more usable with its yard and the setbacks to the property line um, as well. There is a, the application um, currently is between two uh, separate landowners, but the one landowner has a smaller, or wants the smaller south yard, he's actually going to offer to purchase a more piece of the pieces afterwards. Um, so he's kind of reconfiguring it to make more both properties a little bit uh, kind of better yard and layout type of thing. Um, one of the main reasons um, for the application is that the south residential lot, which is currently on a 20-acre title, um, its dwelling um, doesn't meet the proper setbacks to the north property line. Um, so the adjustment is going to bump the property line a little bit to the north, so it's got a little bit um, a greater setback uh, right now, almost from their deck. They can almost reach out and touch the uh, of the other yard, so to speak, it's pretty close there. 
Uh, so it gave a little extra space there in the north. Um, there is a 20-foot uh, setback requirement in the bylaw from uh, allowing or the permanent buildings uh, to the property line. So it'll help bring that into compliance. Um, as well, it'll, it'll uh, just kind of straighten it out between, between the two parcels as well. The, um, it's uh, currently at uh, 11 feet is what the current setback's at. As part of this application as well, um, we're going to uh, straighten out the west property line. Uh, in the past, there was some road widening taken on the west county road, um, except it didn't extend into this parcel. Uh, so there's a drainage ditch that runs on the east side uh, there. Um, so on the final plan and survey, that will be incorporated um, as part of the roadway for the county, and then that ditch becoming part of the, the road system there as they're already. And then straight on the uh, east boundary of the county's west municipal road. So, part of the process would be to straighten that out also. Um, this land is situated within uh, section, section 26. Um, the policies of that area structure plan, um, we're not creating an additional standalone uh, separate title here. We're just adjusting the layout and the acres um, between the two parcels. Um, so there's uh, nothing that it uh, doesn't comply with in regards to the area structure plan. Um, as well, it is in the city IDP area. Um, the city responded to the circulation of the application and mailed any concerns or objections uh, to the application. So it is a bit of a, a odd and then the description so I just put some pictures here just to kind of maybe easily explain uh, what's there now and what's happening so this is what's existing right now um, the orange is the 20 so basically it's just kind of taking the smaller part and, and uh, shifting it between the two yards kind of just kind of going opposite kind of a thing so um, so in the end we still have the two titles but it says smaller bar on the road is going to be on the south and do the swap, so to speak. Um, that south yard as well um, will include uh, their dugout, so the dugout won't be on the residual, it'll be part of the yard parcel on the south there. Um, and then as well, as Hillary showed you on the last uh, picture here too, then that uh, on the west side there uh, will be straight right along the road, so that it becomes kind of part of the county's road allowance. Um, so it's straight instead of jutting out. So if that hopefully makes sense with the pictures, I say it's just kind of a, a swap around. Um, during the circulation, um, there was no objections or concerns received. Um, since the package came out to you, I've now heard back from almost all the utility companies. None of them need an easement or they're covered with existing easements. Um, the only one they haven't heard yet is uh, AltaLink hasn't responded yet, and there's only outstanding uh, utility agency. Um, one of the other issues as well um, is that the municipal reserve has to be um, adjusted um, between the swap here. So when the um, one existing smaller acres was uh, originally subdivided, they paid the municipal reserve on that. Um, so now with the swap here, there's a difference on 1.02 acres. Um, I did get the reserve value in, is that 25,000 per acre. So there have to be an adjustment made on the reserve that was paid before uh, in that difference on that 1.02 acres, um, an adjustment made. And then a deferred reserve caveat um, to be registered on the larger 18.98 acre title. Um, so as this is part of section 26, there's a possibility that they could uh, rezone to Goo Country Residential and come back and do a multi-lot subdivision. So at that time, you would take their needs of reserve on the additional lots they create. So we'll just put that warning on the title, that caveat that there's that uh, possibility in the future if they're subdivided that they would owe the county that municipal reserve. Um, so with that, I have recommended, um, since it is a uh, reconfiguration, uh, uh, adjustment between the two, the configuration and approval uh, would be with the conditions of that 
reserve adjustment. Um, the deferred reserve came up being put on the larger uh, title, the 18.98 acre title. And then the conditions of uh, taxes, uh, development agreement entered into required um, that the plan of survey um, be provided in uh, consideration of the approval here for this land swap. And that as well that the final subdivision plan shall dedicate the area of the ditch situ situated on the west boundary adjacent to County Road, which is 21-2 as road on the final plan. So that's taken over by Lethbridge County um, in order to straighten out that, uh, that uh, west property line, the east uh, perimeter of the road. <coughs> and then the easement, um, just for the also language, just hasn't responded if they need anything. So it would be uh, the six conditions plus the reserve. Oh, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we need to first do 
adjourned. that fit everybody uh, was interesting because uh, mine I could get my arm down the one sleeve and I couldn't find it on the back side over here. <laughs> I don't know whose they were, what thought they were giving me, but anyway. And on the 29th, we went to the planning conference to meet us. Okay, uh, hey, folks, we're in time to April 4th, we had a county council meeting, the 4th uh, Chinook Arch Library meeting. That was the, they were able to secure some funding um, through the provincial government uh, to do a bunch of uh, upgrades and renovations. So that was the, uh, the first meeting held in the newly upgraded Chinook Arch building. Uh, did a really good job. Uh, I believe the grand opening is coming up at the end of the month. Very new building. Uh, the same building, still on the, the north side. Um, just a, a modernization. Uh, April 18th, the County Council meeting, and on the 25th, an uh, update on emergency services meeting. My April started with the third uh, uh, exhibition park board meeting, the fourth at a council meeting, uh, April 11th, uh, agriculture service board, and the 12th had an exhibition park committee meeting, and 16th, uh, had the research station tour, Leopard Research Station tour, which was really great. Uh, 18th council meeting and the 25th update on emergency services. Okay, April 1st, 4th, uh, county council meeting. Okay. April 5th, Highway 3 Swimming Association meeting. The 10th, the Golden Chamber of Commerce meeting. Last round of the 11th, Agriculture Service Board meeting. 16th, the Leopard Research Station tour. 18th, council meeting. 25th update on the Bridges Service meeting and the 29th of the first of Black Office. Thank you. April the 4th Council meeting, and I also got to mention maybe uh, from now on, we should put that on there too. Uh, I also represent the uh, Pitchview Chamber of Commerce I never put in for it, and that's maybe why my name is not down there, but I do represent the county at that chamber meeting. I was also a member of the board. 
before our council. <coughs> April the 11th, Agriculture Service Board meeting. April the 16th, last Principal Church, preaching to her. Oh, it's a good tour. A lot of things going on down there. And in the summer, I believe, the employee of all of this 500 people work it. 500, yeah. But the things they do down there, you know, well, the majority of people don't realize. As a matter of fact, we don't even realize it, I guess, but it's, it's quite something. And on April the 17th, on the committee meeting, and I'll tell you, it's a good thing that I know a lot of things about auditing because uh, I picked quite a few things on, on there and I absolutely couldn't find nothing wrong. <laughs> and then 18, council meeting again. And April the 25th update on emergency services. <clears throat> and that was actually a good meeting too. April the 29th to May the 1st. Uh, there was a planning conference in Radium. It was, I thought it was one of the better ones. That's my report. Thank you. So I just need a motion to accept those reports. Thank you. Well, all in favor? Opposed? Gary. I could leave it today. Chair, as described, this application in front of you is uh, it's a land swap and reconfiguration between two adjacent um, parcels um, located in the section 26, just uh, east of the city here. Um, the it's a, an adjustment in order to make one of the yards um, a little bit more usable with its yard and the setbacks to the property line, um, as well. There is a, the application um, currently between two uh, separate landowners, but the one landowner has a smaller, or wants the smaller south yard, he's actually going to go off and purchase a smaller piece, so he's actually going to pieces afterwards. Um, so he's kind of reconfiguring it to make more full properties a little bit uh, kind of better yard and layout type of thing. Um, one of the main reasons um, for the application is that the south residential lot, which is currently on a 20 acre title, um, its dwelling um, doesn't meet the proper setbacks to the north property line. Um, so the adjustment is going to bump the property line a little bit to the north, so it's got a little bit um, a greater setback uh, right now, almost from their deck. They can almost reach out and touch the uh, fence of the other yard, so to speak, it's pretty close there. Uh, so give a little extra space there in the north. Um, there is a 20-foot uh, setback requirement in the bylaw from the uh, dwelling or the permanent buildings uh, to the property line. So it'll help bring that into compliance. Um, as well, it'll, it'll uh, just kind of straighten it out between, between the two parcels as well. The, um, uh, currently at uh, 11 feet is what the current setback's at. As part of this application as well, um, we're going to uh, straighten out the west property line. Uh, in the past, there was some road widening taken on the west county road, um, except it didn't extend into this parcel. Uh, so there's a drainage ditch that runs on the 
east side uh, there. Um, so on the final plan and survey, that will be incorporated um, as part of the roadway for the county and then that ditch becoming part of the, the road system there at Barrow Lane. Um, so everything then is straight on the uh, east boundary of the county's west municipal road. So part of the process would be to straighten that out also. Um, this land is situated within uh, section, section 26. Um, the policies of that area structure plan, um, we're not creating an additional standalone uh, separate title here. We're just adjusting the layout and the acres um, between the two parcels. Um, so there's uh, nothing that it uh, doesn't comply with in regards to the area structure plan. Um, as well, it is in the city IDP area. Um, the city responded to the circulation of the application and made any concerns or objections uh, to the application. So it is a bit of a, a odd and then a description. So I just put some pictures here just to kind of maybe easily explain uh, what's there now and what's happening. So this is what's existing right now. Um, the orange is the 20, so basically it's just kind of taking the smaller part and, and uh, shifting it between the two yards, kind of just the kind of opposite kind of a thing. So, um, so in the end, we still have the two titles, but it says smaller bars being on the road is going to be on the south approach, just kind of being the swap, so to speak. Um, that south yard as well um, will include uh, their dugout, so the dugout won't be on the residual, that'll be part of the yard parcel. And then as well, as Hillary showed you on the last uh, picture here too, then that uh, on the west side there uh, would be straight right along the road. So that it becomes kind of part of the county's road allowance. Um, so it's straight instead of jutting out. Just to kind of clean that up. So if that hopefully makes sense with the pictures, like I say it's just kind of a, a swap around. Um, during the circulation, um, there was no objections or concerns received. Um, since the package came out to you, I've now heard back from almost all the 40 companies. None of them need an easement or they're covered with existing easements. Um, the only one I haven't heard yet is that uh, AltaLink hasn't responded yet. And there's only outstanding uh, utility agency. Um, one of the other issues as well um, is that the municipal reserve has to be um, adjusted um, between the swap here. So when the um, one existing smaller acreage was uh, originally subdivided, they paid the municipal reserve on that. Um, so now with the swap here, there's a difference on 1.02 acres. Um, I did get the reserve value in, is that 25,000 per acre. So there have to be an adjustment made on the reserve that was paid before uh, in that difference on that 1.02 acres, um, an adjustment made. And then a deferred reserve caveat um, to be registered on the larger 18.98 acre title. Um, so as this is part of section 26, there's the possibility that they could uh, rezone to Good Country Residential and come back and do a multi-lot subdivision. So at that time, you would take the needs of reserve on the additional lots they so we'll just put that warning on the title, that caveat that there's that uh, possibility in the future if they're to subdivide that they would owe the county that municipal reserve. Um, so with that, I have recommended, um, since it is a uh, reconfiguration, uh, uh, adjustment between the two, the reconfiguration and approval um, would be with the conditions of that reserve adjustment, um, the deferred reserve caveat being put on the larger uh, title, the 18.98 acre title, and then the conditions of uh, taxes, uh, development agreement entered into required, um, that the plan of survey um, be provided in uh, consideration of the approval here for this land swap, and that as well that the final subdivision plan shall dedicate the area of the ditch situ situated on the west boundary adjacent to the county road in 21-2 as road on the final plan, so that's taken over by Lethbridge County um, in order to straighten out that, uh, that uh, west property line, the east uh, perimeter of the road. <coughs> and then the easement um, 
just refer the alt to link, which just has the respond if they need anything. So it would be uh, the six conditions plus the reserve. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is it Southwest Quarter 36? 26. Or, 26. or is 36 here? 36 here. So that's um, so it's the 26, right? Yeah, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Oh. That was my error. It's 26. Yeah. We don't have 36 yeah, quarters yeah. in, a, in, the, in the system. <laughs> Slip the finger. <laughs> so I, I, I have a couple of questions for you. Mm -hmm. So is, is the current configuration, is it the same owner for one and two? It's currently two separate owners. So this the smaller title is owned by Mr. Black. Yeah. And the larger title is currently owned by the Pollocks. Right. And so, but they are looking to purchase um, Mr. Black's parcel. So, okay, because there's a house on parcel two already. That's right. right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, I got you now. So you, you're just going to reconfigure and still have the title. That's right. Yeah. yeah. They're just kind so the of. Res the reservoir zip is going to be included in title one for the new. Yeah. yeah. So, where, where, where um, the so there's two reservoirs, one that's on the yeah. smaller title, and then there's also this one. Oh, that would be part. So okay. this one's going to be contained within the new okay. um, post uh, smaller title, and then this one will stay with the larger title. So okay. they both would have like their irrigation, it's just for domestic irrigation right. on their properties. I don't believe they use those for potable water. At this time. No, they're on, they're on. Water, the what's on. Yes. Any other questions? So the, this actual sale of the property and the transfer will have to occur before you can... Uh, I think they were just ensuring the out they wanted to know the outcome of um, the, the subdivision and then they were going to have... They, they were going to so you kind of would approve it pending... No, you don't need to because that's a separate, it's a separate transaction, really. That's between the two lenders. But I guess how can we approve something that they don't own? Well, yeah, they because they are both in agreement. They both signed the application. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, then at the back end, they both have to sign the consents for land titles. So basically what ha will happen is they'll sign on the subdivision, they both have to sign a consent. Uh, so we need two consents. And when that goes up to land titles uh, for their sale, they got a transfer rate. So land titles registers the plan and creates the new titles, and then it goes across the hall to the real estate department, and then they'll transfer it from the blocks over to the Pollocks, whatever type of thing. So it's done pretty currently, but. Yeah, similar to when we've done um, a lot of adjustments, say, on the irrigation pivot corners, where you have, have like a, a, the larger landowner and the acreage owner working together. So they both have to sign the, cons the consents for the separation. So this is just on a smaller scale, but the same thing. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, I'll move the subdivision application 201-0-060 block two plan to be approved subject to conditions as this does. Sure. The May 16, 2019 council. Any further discussion? Call for question. Those in favor? Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I think we need the board to adjourn. Four, four, four. All in favor? Mover. Carried.